Okay, in this video, I'm gonna solve problem number five from the chapter 4C homework. This was 4.70 uh, from uh, the homework assignment. And this is probably the most complicated of the problems. Lots of numerical stuff going on, oops. And um, lots of you wrote to me saying, I have no idea where to start, or how do you even begin with something that's got so many different unknowns? And there are a lot of unknowns in this question. Okay, so let's read the problem. We've got a tennis ball. Uh, being shot straight up. It's hitting a marble that is held stationary at the top of the barrel by a piece of plastic wrap. And the plastic wrap is just there to keep it stationary until the, the tennis ball hits it. Um, they both fly up into the air and they come, they end up at some heights before they fall back down again. And from that, we're supposed to kind of work backwards to figure out what's the tennis ball's launch speed. Okay. So the thing that we're looking for in the end is velocity of the tennis ball before the hit with the marble. That is our, the thing we're looking for. So everything is gonna be aimed towards getting back to that. Let's do a drawing. So we've got uh, tennis ball, we've got marble, and tennis ball has that initial speed that we're looking for, velocity of the tennis ball before, and the marble's not moving. So this is situation one, and then two, we've got both of them flying up in the air, straight up, so that there's gonna be a velocity of the marble after the hit, and a velocity of the tennis ball after the hit. And then finally, I'll put it way up here, there's a final height for the marble and a final height for the tennis ball, uh, which in my case is h equals 180 meters and h equals 55 meters. So at that moment, they momentarily come to a rest up at the high points before they fall back down again. Um, those are gonna happen at different moments in time for each ball. Um, so this is the, the high points. High point, after the hit, before the hit. Okay, so how are we gonna do this? Well, to start with, this is a collision problem, and we are very familiar with how to set up collision problems at this point. We've got um, a momentum of the tennis ball coming in, and that has to equal the momentum of the system of the tennis ball and the marble afterwards. So let's start with that. So situation one, before the hit, Momentum equals the mass of the tennis ball um, times the velocity of the tennis ball before. And we can put numbers in for that. That is uh, 0.058 kilograms times the velocity of the tennis ball before, which we don't know yet. Okay. And that, since that's the only thing moving before the hit with the marble, that's the only momentum in the system. All right. Situation two, right after the hit, a collision has happened and they're both moving. So momentum is the mass of the tennis ball, the inertia of the tennis ball rather, times the velocity of the tennis ball after the hit, which we don't know, plus the inertia of the marble times the velocity of the marble after the hit which we also don't know. Filling in a few numbers for that, we've got 0 0.058 kilograms times the velocity of the tennis ball after, plus 0 0.010 kilograms for the marble times the velocity of the marble after. So those are the inertias before the hit, sorry, not the momentums before the hit and after the hit. And we know those two have to be equal to each other because that is the only interaction going on. Um, so this is an isolated system um, for the moment. So those two momentums have to be equal to each other. So this gives us an equation, uh, 0.058 velocity of the tennis ball before equals 0.058 velocity of the tennis ball after plus 0 0.010 velocity of the marble after. Okay, so we have an equation 
that we're going to use to figure out the thing that we're looking for, the velocity of the tennis ball before, but it's got two unknowns in it. Well, it's got three unknowns. Three different things, and only one of them is the one that we want to know. As you know from math, that's not enough information. In order to figure out uh, three different things that we don't know, we need at least three separate, different, unrelated relationships between those variables so that we can figure out what those things are. So we're going to need more information to figure out the velocity of the tennis ball just after the hit and the velocity of the marble just after the hit. That information is coming from time three when they're all at their high point. So the high points are going to tell us something about those velocities. Okay, so let's start with the velocity of the tennis ball after. How are we going to figure that out? So the, um, the velocity of the tennis ball afterwards and the height, there's a relationship between how high something goes when gravity is slowing it down and how fast it must have been going when it started. That relationship is the position equation. X equals X sub I plus V initial times T plus one half AT squared. That equation is true for any uh, motion problem with constant acceleration. Um, so in particular, it applies to this one. So we've got the height that it goes to, which was, in our case, for the tennis ball, 55 meters. So we've got 55. The heights that it started from, zero. The initial velocity times the time in the air. Well, the initial velocity is something we don't know. It's velocity of the tennis ball afterwards times the time in the air, which we don't know, plus one half times acceleration due to gravity, negative 9.8 times the time in the air squared, which we don't know. So it's, it may seem like we've not helped ourselves at all. We've written down a relationship between the variable that we're looking for and other things that we know, but that relationship has another unknown in it, the time. So we still need more information. How are we gonna get information about how much time it spends in the air? Okay. That comes from the, uh, so th this equation describes the position changing. There's another one describing the velocity changing if there's a constant acceleration. V equals VI plus AT. And both of these come from um, the integral relationships between the acceleration and the velocity and the position. So this is integrating a constant acceleration. Okay, at the high point, what's the velocity? Zero. At the starting point, what the, what's the velocity? We don't know. It's the velocity of the tennis ball just after the hit. B, T, A. What's the acceleration? It's negative 9.8. What's the time in the air? We don't know. But we're about to find out. OK, so I'm going to use this equation about the velocity to figure out how much time it spends in the air, or at least an expression for how much time it spends in the air. So that's rearranging that, you get negative V T sub A equals negative 9.8 T. That means the time in the air is V T sub A over 9.8. Then I'm gonna take that and substitute it in for the T up in the position equation. That's gonna give me 55 equals uh, velocity of the tennis ball just afterwards times the velocity of the tennis ball just afterwards divided by 9.8. Um, plus one half times negative 9.8 times the velocity of the tennis ball just afterwards divided by 9.8 squared. All right, so then both of these terms are proportional to V squared. Velocity equals VTA squared over 9.8 minus 1 half VTA squared also over 9.8 because this 9.8 gets squared and there's one more 9.8. <clears throat> So then we get 55 equals one half VTA squared over 
whoa. So then, rearrange that, you get 55 times 2 times 9.8 square root equals the velocity of the tennis ball just after the hit. And let me pull up my calculator. Um, let's see, scientific calculator. And I want the square root of 55 times 2 times 9.8 is 32.8. 32.8. Three meters per second, which is around three seconds in the air. Okay, so that's um, the initial velocity of the tennis ball. That's a number that goes up here in that equation. Now we need to do the same exact process for the velocity of the marble just after the hit um, using the same information. I'm not going to finish doing all of that. I'm going to let you do that. So the idea is, go back here, we've got three different moments in time that we have information about. We've got um, just before the tennis ball hits the marble and the velocity of the tennis ball just before that hit, that's the thing we're looking for. We've got information about just after the hit, all in variables, just the velocity of the marble after and the velocity of the tennis ball afterwards and the masses and all that. So we know they hit and the momentum must be the same. And then we know about the how high each of them gets, the heights at the high point. We're gonna use momentum conservation of the two of the first two times to get an equation describing the momentum. It's got three unknowns in it. We're gonna figure out one of those unknowns using the height information. We're gonna find the other unknown using the other height information and just keep patiently working through this. So the difficulty here is the complexity of it, um, of understanding the situation and the number of different unknowns. Um, and that's a little bit new for us. So if you get stuck farther down on it, let me know. But that, that's as far as I'm gonna do the video for it. And I'll put a picture of this PDF on, on the webpage too. All right, thank you.